Today's show is brought to you by a new podcast produced by MJ Bulls Media called Hemp Barons. It's a weekly show about the hemp companies, products, and entrepreneurs who are using this amazing plant to change the world. Listen to a new show every Tuesday on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And if you like the show, please subscribe, rate, and review. And most importantly, this is now 177 incremental individuals who are deeply invested, I mean, have literal skin in the game from a financial standpoint in the success of our business. And that's that many more advocates on the streets thinking about talking about and relaying the story of Cannabis Big Data. So I think there's a lot of value above and beyond just the dollars. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, we're launching a new mini-series about cannabis crowdfunding with two companies, one that's in the middle of a cannabis crowdfunding campaign, and the other that's hosting their campaign. Today in Raising Cannabis Capital, we are starting a new series about cannabis crowdfunding. And to kick off the series, we are joined by two former guests, Henry Finkelstein from Cannabis Big Data, and Brett Andrews from Micro Ventures. Hi, guys. Hi there. Hey, how's it going, Dan? It's going great. It's going great. And, you know, for you guys snuck one in on me. For our avid listeners, you may have already connected the dots, but when Henry was on the show, he said Cannabis Big Data was working on raising capital. And then Brett was on like a week later, and he was telling us that Micro Ventures was super close to doing their first cannabis crowdfunding deal. Well, you probably guessed it. MicroVentures' first cannabis crowdfunding company is Cannabis Big Data. Good job, guys. Not letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> yeah, we uh, thank you. And yeah. It's an honor yeah, to be the thanks. first on the on the platform. Ah, I, I bet. But all seriously, guys, congratulations. This is. I mean, it's not just exciting news for you. It's exciting news for the entire industry because crowdfunding is by far the number one question that our listeners email us about. I'm going to start with Henry. I want to just just jump right into it. Two quick questions. With all the cannabis fundraising options, why did you select crowdfunding? And number two is why did you decide to work with micro ventures? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for asking, Dan. Crowdfunding is a very interesting choice for venture because it's relatively new. It's only within the last, I want to say, five years that the regulations have allowed I think it's even four years, Brett can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just recently that the rules have changed to allow for this type of crowdfunding. So it's a relatively new entrant to the market. And from that perspective, it was interesting to us. I have experience in the past working with crowdfunding campaigns and actually in university wrote my senior thesis on peer-to-peer lending networks that function in ways that are similar to a crowdfunding campaign. So I have a, a personal affinity to it. And perhaps most importantly, I saw it as another acquisition channel for venture into the business. So having been out there and and raised funds in a more traditional venture capital context, this is a different beast and it has pros and cons, but it's a completely different avenue for generating operating capital. We thought that was a valuable path to pursue. And as it relates to micro ventures, well, truth be told, micro ventures actually reached out to us and I'm so glad they did because it's been fantastic to work with them. In reviewing lots of different options for crowdfunding campaigns, we saw that MicroVentures had a pretty good track record. And after starting the process with them, uh, their due diligence process was very rigorous. I was actually rather impressed with the specificity and how granular they got with all of their questions and analysis. And I think it shows based on how the profile is put together and, and the degree of specificity there. It's a fantastic due diligence package, and it's been great to work with MicroVentures. Oh, and I look at your page on their website, and I've told you this already. It's fabulous. So well done. So well done. Brett, kind of the same question for you, though. With cannabis companies, there's so many of them raising money right now. Why did you select Cannabis Big Data to, to launch into the cannabis space? Another great question, Dan. So I think when you had me on last, and one of the things that we talked about was how bullish we are as a firm and our investor network is on the cannabis space in general. And I think our thesis has really been that we are looking for ancillary technologies that can sort of build on the momentum that the space has had 
without having to get into some of the regulatory issues that come with touching the flower and, and elsewhere. And and I think when we came across cannabis big data, not only is it does it fit within that, but it also is is a cross section with the I mean the whole big data industry, which is another industry that we see as a massive opportunity and hasn't really been taken advantage of in the cannabis space as far as we've seen. So and then you add on the layer that Henry and his team they they bring a very sophisticated and professional background to the business. And I think because the industry is new, there's not a ton of companies out there that have that level of expertise and, and that level of experience and professionalism. So we just saw it as, as an opportunity that we were really excited about. And we're very happy that Henry chose to work with us and it's been a great experience so far. And I think the raise has been proving that though. So. Oh, I would say so. I would say so. We're going to get into that in a minute. But, you know, in our upcoming episodes, uh, we're really going to get into the crowdfunding nuts and bolts. But for today, we're going to focus on the cannabis big data deal. And Henry, tell us about the cannabis big data crowdfunding offering. Yeah, absolutely. There are some regulatory boundaries around what's allowed to be raised. And there are effectively two tiers of raising. One is below $107,000, up to, I should say, one hundred and seven, dollars and the other is above. And typically, it's unless you're intending on having a blowout campaign, it's a good idea to start with that that first tier. And that's exactly what we did. So the, the max goal for the campaign is $107,000. And the minimum threshold to raise was $25,000. But I believe we blew through that in the first couple of days, actually, of the campaign. So it was a really fantastic launch out the gate. Oh, you're being modest here. But I, I have the <laughs> Micro Ventures website up, and I see right now that he's got a 177 people have already invested in this deal. I mean, and it's almost it's really fantastic. Yeah, it's almost fully subscribed already. Nothing against Cannabis Big Data because you have an awesome company, but I'm also sensing that there's a pent up demand for investment in cannabis. Brad, are you feeling the same thing? Yeah, of course. So, the, I mean, you touched on it and Henry touched on it as well. So, re- really, up until the last four years, you know, there hasn't been a mechanism for non accredited investors to invest in private companies, especially ones that are in an early enough stage where there's still a lot of room for them to grow. And I think ever since the Jobs Act passed and the rules finally were issued and and Reg CF has opened up, pair that with the growth of the cannabis industry as a whole. And you're certainly seeing investors out there that are wanting to get into this. Cannabis Big Data is a perfect example of it. That demand is there and we're we're seeing it. And that's why we're continuing to look for other opportunities as well. But we're, we're very happy with how the rays have gone so far for cannabis big data. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a perfect example of an opportunity that investors are looking to get into. And it, a lot of it has to do with the fact that they're involved in the cannabis space. Henry, do you have something oh, to add to uh, that? Yeah, I'd love to throw something out there. And it touches on something you mentioned earlier, Dan, about the 177 investors. For those of you out there thinking about doing a crowdfunding campaign, a question that I get from other institutional investors, accredited investors writing bigger checks, is why would you go down that road and would you want that many people on your cap table? It's worth noting that the mechanisms are such that it's not 177 individuals on the cap table. In some ways, it's much closer to an FBV structure. It's one line item on the cap table. And most importantly, this is now 177 incremental individuals who are deeply invested. I mean, have literal skin in the game from a financial standpoint in the success of our business. And that's that many more advocates on the streets thinking about talking about and relaying the story of cannabis big data. So I think there's a lot of value above and beyond just the dollars. Is it a venture capital firm? No, it's a very different vehicle and a very different type of interaction. In being different, it has unique pros that other traditional capital simply does not have. Yeah. And I'm going to add to that two things. One is people can make very, very minimal investment. I think $100 is the minimum investment into this project. So some people are, you know, they're just hoping for that grand slam home run, catch Microsoft when they first start, and they're just putting $100 in to see where it goes. The other thing is your communication is only going to be with micro ventures. It's not like you're going to have to pick up the phone and and answer 177 people's questions every day. Yeah. Hopefully this has been Henry's experience. I think we go out of our way to really 
you know, add as much value as, as we can. And that's both through the due diligence process. And, you know, again, some of that is for us, or a lot of it is, and for on behalf of our investors, but it's also for the company. Part of the process, and I've seen this happen for many companies that have gone through the Reg CF process, where going through the due diligence alone can be an exercise that's really healthy. You know, many companies, if they haven't raised venture before, may have not gone through it. So there's that element. But then, yeah, you're right. I think from the administrative side, we bring a lot of resources to the table that can help both with disseminating information and handling tax documents or disbursement of funds. There's a lot of resources that I think we bring to bear with regards to that. And Reg CF is one of them. So I want to take a quick break to thank all of our Raising Cannabis Capital listeners and to remind you that you can support the show by subscribing to MJ Bulls Premium. It's only $4.99 per month, and you gain access to all previous Raising Cannabis Capital episodes, as well as all other MJ Bulls produced podcasts and exclusive content, including companies' investor pitch decks. Go to mjbulls.com and enter promo code RAISING to get your first month free. Well, we're going to have every... Right now, I just started to say this. We have all of Henry Finkelstein's and Cannabis Big Data's and Brett's and Micro Ventures information on our, the MJ Bulls website. Included in that information will be Cannabis Big Data's funding page. But before we wrap this up, I noticed on your page a pop-up for questions. This is kind of related to what we were just talking about. Brett, if one of our listeners tonight has a question for Henry about the deal, can they use the pop-up on the Cannabis Big Data crowdfunder t- page to ask Henry directly? Yep. So one of the things that came with the rules from the SEC when they, they finally passed the rules of the Jobs Act and, and allowing the reg, regulation CF exemption was that the platforms hosting those deals had to uh, have an outlet for investors to ask questions. So we call it a discussion forum. And there is one at the bottom of the Cannabis Big Data campaign page. And so if you log into MicroVentures and make an account, you can go in there and ask questions and I haven't checked it in the last couple of days, but I know from the last time I was looking, uh, Henry's been extremely responsive on those. I mean, I think it's rare for investors, specifically in private companies, to be able to have this type of direct contact with the owner of a company. I think it's good for investors and it's good for the entrepreneur as well. They get an opportunity to uh, address concerns and not have anything left in a gray area. So yes, to answer your question, there is a discussion forum there. All you got to do is sign up for an account. It's free and you can ask away. That's good. I'm glad I asked that question. I, Henry didn't mention this earlier, but this deal's closing in like maybe less than a week. So you got to move quickly. Get your account set up on MicroVentures. <laughs> Get that $100 investment. You might, Like I said, you might be catching Microsoft by the tail in the early days. So Henry, Brett, super exciting. Thanks for being on the show again. (laughs) I have a feeling this will not be your last time on this show. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it, Dan. Thank you very much, Dan. It's always an honor to be here. Thanks for listening to Raising Cannabis Capital. To learn more about today's guest or to become a guest, visit our website at mjbulls.com. Today's show was produced by MJ Bulls Media with original music produced in part by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the Raising Cannabis Capital Podcast.